Welcome to Aging in Full Bloom with Lisa Stockdale, sponsored by Capital Healthcare Network, an Ohio-based, family-owned and operated company providing solutions that help seniors age on their own terms. Those solutions include home care, senior living, nursing home and rehab care, and hospice. Learn more at CapitalHealthCareNetwork.com. Thank you for listening to Aging in Full Bloom with Lisa Stockdale. Today I have a special guest actually in the studio with me, which is exciting because so many of our guests are over the phone, which is necessary when you're interviewing somebody in Canada or Florida or wherever they might be, California, and we're in the Midwest, Columbus, Ohio, if you didn't know. Um, Naomi Marino, is that, did I say your name right? Yeah, you did. Okay. And you are with the Alzheimer's Association local branch. What's your role there? So I am the development manager with the Central Ohio chapter. So I oversee the longest day, which is our second signature event. And I also manage one of our walks. Um, I manage the walk to end Alzheimer's in Circleville. Okay. So Central Ohio, and what does that include for you? That includes four. Teen counties, <laughs> um, ranging all the way from Morrow County all the way down. I mean, I don't know all the counties off the top of my head, but we go pretty far south. If you're anywhere in the center of the state of Ohio, you're our girl. Correct. Right? <laughs> and you're kind of new in this position, yes? Yes, I've been here for just over two months. Okay. What did you do previously? Um, before this, I was with YWCA Columbus in volunteer management. All right. And some of our listeners will see a pic of you depending on where they pick the podcast up. Many will not. So I'm going to tell them you're young. You're <laughs> young. And of course, by my standards, can I ask how old you are? I am 24. 24. So you're young by most people's standards. <laughs> Why are you interested in this stuff that doesn't really apply to you? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I, you know, after graduating from college, was looking to get involved in the nonprofit sector. Um, I've been a volunteer my whole life, and working for a mission was something that was really important for me. Um, so after working in volunteer management, I loved that, but was ready to get into more of like a fundraising and event planning role. Um, so really was looking for an organization whose mission I believed in and could support um, and with a role that I was interested in. So it brought me to the Alzheimer's Association. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a degree in neuroscience, so it was kind of a perfect fit, my education, learning about Alzheimer's, um, and then my passion for, you know, working with people who care about a nonprofit and a cause. Um, so it's been a really amazing fit so far. If I had a gold star, I'd give it to you. Oh, but thank I don't. you. But it's so important what you're saying because, first of all, we need involvement at every level, including our young people. We need you to be involved in this. And what you're telling us is you're mission driven. You care. You care about working with other people who care. And you happen to know a little something about this disease or the disease process. Mm -hmm. well, Alzheimer's is a type of dementia. Mm -hmm. um, it's the most prevalent. It's the one that we hear about the most often. It's not the only type. Um, and it progresses in a particular way. Well, I can talk a little bit about like the neurobiology of it and how it's an accumulation of protein and plaque in your brain. Um, and that is what causes cell damage. And in most people, it progresses in a particular way. And people always say they think that Alzheimer's is about being forgetful, mm -hmm. but there's normal forgetfulness that comes with aging, and then there's Alzheimer's or dementia right. forgetfulness. And it's about forgetting not just people's names and places and events, but eventually how to breathe, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, and the reason I bring that up is because I think sometimes it gets glossed over as just being about forgetfulness and people kind of shrug it off. No. This is a brutal monster. And so far, there have been no survivors because there's no cure. Um, but we're working to change that with yes. events like the walk and the longest day. The walk is behind us because we're in October, right? And most people did that in September. So now you're focusing on the longest day. Tell us all about it. Yeah, so the longest day <clears throat> is the second signature event with the Alzheimer's Association. Um, it started in 2012 when 
we noticed that there was a high increase in fundraising events related to endurance sports. So running, cycling, sports like that. And so we really wanted to get involved. And that year, they launched The Longest Day. Um, and encourage individuals on the summer solstice Mm -hmm. to participate and raise funds and awareness for Alzheimer's. That was incredibly successful, um, but they also noticed that people wanted to get involved outside of endurance sports. Yeah, so because I'm not doing an endurance. Me sports. neither. Can I just tell you that? <laughs> if you see me running, run with me. It's a bad thing. <laughs> Go on. So after that, they launched. You know, the longest day. Participate by doing an activity of your choice, and since then it has only grown. So the longest day happens on the summer solstice every year, which is the day with the most light. So on the day with the most light is the day that we fight. Yeah, Um, I love it. The day with the most light is the day that we fight. Yeah. And it really is about fighting. It's about showing up, participating, contributing, in the interest of fighting this dreadful disease. Absolutely. And really raising a light and raising awareness to Alzheimer's and all other forms of dementia and doing it through an activity of your choice. Um, I've noticed a lot of people participate by doing an activity in honor of a loved one. So maybe someone in their life has died of Alzheimer's and they loved to play a board game. And so that person will invite friends and family over, play a board game, honor their loved one, raise awareness, raise funds, and help join the fight against Alzheimer's personalize what you do. Absolutely. You know, That's what's so awesome about The Longest Day. Yeah. You can do anything. Unlike the walk, you're walking. <laughs> True. But maybe you can't walk or maybe you don't want to walk. Maybe exactly. you want to do something different. Um, what are other examples of things people have done on The Longest Day? I'll tell you what we've done. Yeah, please so, do. So our organization, and this is why you came to me and introduced yourself. And mm-hmm. I was like, yes, of course, I'll meet with you. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> Capital Health has traditionally done a bowling event, and we call it Strike Out Alzheimer's, um, where we go to a bowling alley and we invite members of our team, our referral sources, colleagues. We'll invite my podcaster. We'll invite all kinds of people, right? And we show up and we bowl. We have fun. Um, and we always have a silent um, what they, a silent auction, and then we have door prizes that they can buy tickets for. That's really where we um, raise the most money. It isn't really from the bowling event. <laughs> but we have fun. We spend time together. We talk about the cause, and then we're able to present the Alzheimer's Association with a check at the end of all of that. And we are fortunate to have agencies across Ohio. So we have traditionally done it here in Central Ohio, also in Ashtabula, in Steubenville, the Ohio Valley. And this year we will include Dayton. So that's what we do, and we are determined that this will happen next year. We didn't get to do it in 2020. We didn't do it this year. But we feel like the path is clearing for next year. In fact, I was just um, looking at statistics that were sent to me, talking about the incidence of COVID, that it's going down in central Ohio. Oh, my God. That's Finally. A happy, that's a happy day. I don't know if that trend will stay, but we're going to celebrate every victory we can get and hope that next year we are back. Maybe it's never going to be the way it was, but closer mm-hmm. to the way it was. So we can at least get together and raise funds for important causes. What else have people done? Yeah, so the thing that I love so much about The Longest Day is that your event can be as big as you want it to be or as small. So (laughs) thinking on a larger scale, um, we have a group in Lancaster where they're senior living facilities, and they all come together, um, and they'll do their own fundraiser throughout the year. Um, One does a wreath sale around Christmas time. One does like a bingo night. Um, And then they gather that money and celebrate on or around The Longest Day through a Main Street event. So, oh, so you could be raising money all year long. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. You can participate all year long. It's a great idea. Um, but we really recommend coming together around the longest day, around the summer solstice um, to celebrate that fundraising. Is that June 21st? It is 2022. Okay. Yep. All right. And typically we try to come together during that week, mm-hmm. right? Because not everybody can do the 21st. Right. And I don't know if it falls on a Saturday or Sunday, it, what that would mean. Yeah, it but is a weekday week. this year. Yep. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. But fundraising, you know, we have launched our 2022 season already. Um, so you can start today and really do anything. Um, 
But so some other ideas of people that have been successful in the past, we have a local fitness center here in Columbus where they will do a group fitness class that is donation based. Uh Um, And they all bring in decorations. And this year I will be there from the association to represent. Um, We also have, you know, there's a gentleman. He is a big fitness person, does CrossFit, loves it. And he lost his mother to Alzheimer's. So in honor of her, he does a certain number of reps um, that correspond with her birthday Uh, in order to honor her. And he encourages friends and family to help sponsor him through each rep um, to join, raise awareness and funds. And then we even have people who do something as simple as creating a Facebook fundraiser. Um, Just putting the word out there that they're supporting the Alzheimer's Association, why they are raising money, why they are participating in the longest day, um, and just getting the word out. Now, I just want to say one little thing, because you've mentioned this a couple times, that some folks are doing this to honor their loved ones. But you don't have to know anybody with this disease to get involved. I remember doing something for the Parkinson's Foundation at one point, and um, it was a fundraiser. And somebody with the disease approached me and said, who do you know that has the disease? And I said, not a soul. You don't have to. Mm -mm. You just have to care about humanity, right? Exactly. And if you care about people who are aging, this is definitely something that you want to get involved in because we do know that it affects older people a lot more than it affects younger people. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Younger people will eventually become older people. It Mm -hmm. affects all of us. And this disease... um, doesn't take prisoners, as they say. The family comes right along with the patient, um, and it's incredibly difficult on everyone involved because you watch your loved one descend into madness, really. Mm -hmm. So I don't, again, I want to be blunt with people because I want people to understand how serious this is. Um, Sometimes they just think it's about the purple flowers that they see, Mm -hmm. you know, the commercials, but it's ugly. Yeah. And that's why we have to fight, and that's why we have to stand together and get involved and roll up our sleeves. Exactly. And that's what you're asking us to do. Now, you are trying to put a committee together locally. Yes. Tell me about that. Yes. So the longest day could not happen without our amazing volunteers and our amazing committee. So we have a large goal. Um, as we are trying to advance the mission forward, we are hoping to raise $100,000 this year through the, th- the longest day season. Um, and I am recruiting a committee to help me make that happen, to help get the word out, to help connect with their local networks, um, and to do their own longest day event themselves. Okay. So I'm recruiting volunteers to join um, and just help get the word out. <laughs> So now you're a recruiter on top of everything else. Huh? <laughs> so what what are you looking for in a volunteer? Somebody who's passionate about the mission, somebody who is looking to end Alzheimer's. Like you said, you don't have to know somebody. Um, you just have to care about humanity. Mm-hmm. Um also somebody who is not afraid to get their hands dirty. Mm -hmm. Um, My volunteer committee will be working directly with me to engage our participants, to, you know, recruit local businesses to join and just help spread the word. So uh, what kind of time commitment are you looking for? It will be a couple hours a month. Um, We will be meeting virtually once a month for about an hour. And with that, I will give um, just a few tasks to do throughout the month. They're going to give some homework. Yep, just a little bit. That's what volunteers do. (laughs) Yeah. But the best part is that I will work directly with our committee members to really make the role something that they enjoy and something that they are getting um, something out of. And how many volunteers do you need? Um, Ideally, you know, there's no such thing as too many. I would like to have around 15 to 20. All right. And how many do you have currently? Right now I have about four or five. Okay. So All right. So need some more. A little work to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how would someone contact you if they hear, if you're local in the Columbus, Ohio area, and you want to be involved, or in the central Ohio area in one of the mm-hmm. 14 counties, Um, if you're in Ohio, let's just say that if they call you and they're not in your area, you'll refer them to the right person. Oh, absolutely. So if you're in Ohio and you would like to be on this committee, how would they go about contacting you? So they can email me or call or text me. Okay. Uh, My email address is nlmarino at alz.org. And my phone number is 614-643-2136. And we'll be sure to include that information with the podcast so they can um, easily contact you to volunteer if they're interested. So lots of opportunities. Now, after the longest day is over, then do you go right into the walk? They overlap. 
Longest day is never over. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Good point. So are, are there any other things that you sort of manage at the Alzheimer's Association or this is really your gig, this fundraising piece? This is my gig. Between the Circleville Walk and the Longest Day, those are my two babies right now. Okay. Social media. Social media is was heavily involved with us when we were doing the strikeout. Talk to me about that. How does that all work? Well, that's the amazing thing about peer-to-peer fundraising is that social media is what makes it happen. So you can register. Um, if you're interested in signing up, you can do so today. Um, you can register at alz.org slash the longest day. Um, and there are amazing resources to help you get started In addition, you'll be hearing from myself or one of our awesome committee members to Uh welcome you and coach you through your your event. Um, But through our website, you have a participant center. You can directly link to a Facebook fundraiser. There are email templates to send out to your network. Um, We even have a community online where you can connect with other people within the Longest Day community, get ideas, get coaching, ask questions. And it's very helpful. I will just say, (laughs) as someone who has done it, you're not on your own. There's a whole template in place. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a how-to guide if you want to use it. And you get stuff, right? Yes, you You do. Um, This year, our early bird incentive. So if you register before February 28th, you will get this really awesome, it's the longest day branded thermal mug. Okay. Um, You also will get a t-shirt, of course, and maybe some more freebies along the way. So I have two t-shirts, both of which have been stolen by my 24-year-old son, (laughs) (laughs) and I never get to wear them anymore. But anyway, um, they are cool things to have after the fact, and they help you remember all year long Mm -hmm. that it's coming up and what you want to do, and so you're kind of planning as you go along. Anything else you want our audience to know? Just if you are thinking about it, if it sparks your interest, I highly recommend registering and joining the committee. Um, It's such a great way. You know, it's so special because it's that you're turning something you already are probably doing Mm -hmm. into an event to raise awareness against Alzheimer's. So get involved and sign up. Yeah. And and if you want to, I mean, it can be anything from playing checkers. Mm -hmm. To singing, to bowling, to running, to doing whatever you want to do. Yeah, we have global teams, too. And actually, our largest global team is a bridge league. There you go. (laughs) There you go. Well, Naomi, again, thank you for being involved as a young person. Keep the good work up. Now, we should say, even if you're not from Ohio, we know many of our listeners are not, your local Alzheimer's Association is doing a longest day fundraiser Mm -hmm. in your area. So contact them. Find out what they're up to, how you can get involved where you live, because obviously this affects everybody. Yes. Yes. Give us your website one more time. ALZ.org slash The Longest Day. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed the podcast and learned a little something along the way. As always, may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be forever at your back.